everybody, and welcome back to Bottomless Coffee Podcast. I'm Jerome Evans, and you can find my socials. That's Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, which is still weird, and all the others at bottomlesscoffeeshow.com. Oh, and you'll also find all of our episodes available for streaming there, too. So, you know, no time like the present to check out the website. Uh, today, I'm caving, and I'm giving you all what you want. Bottomless Coffee is finally doing a murder podcast episode. Kind of. Kind of. We'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> that voice you hear providing the sound effects is our guest today. It's Brad Ferenza. He's creator of the episodic audio drama Around the Sun, which is just about to enter its third season. Now, Brad is an award-winning New York-based writer, performer, and creator. His artistic style blends observational humor and existential contemplation, which should be great <laughs> for our podcast. <laughs> Brad's original films include Awakening Arlene, I'm sorry, Awakening Arlene, oh, I said it right, Breaking Points, and The Lady Yang. His plays have been presented in New York and Los Angeles. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Hey, Jerome, did I do all that? You, apparently, yes. <laughs> well, thank you for plugging... <laughs> All of it, including Around the Sun. And thank you for having me on. And thanks to our friend Dwayne for making it happen. Woo! Dwayne, author of Selling Dead People, Dead People's Things. You can find and it on Amazon. Confidential. Yes! I've actually, okay, I've read Selling Dead People's Things. I have not read Vintage Confidential yet, so I need to get on that. Ah, I have read Vintage Confidential. It's a bit more gossipy. It's a bit more salacious. It's a bit more personal i think for huh. Dwayne, though i don't speak for him and yet i also think he would tell you that he's straddling the line between fiction nonfiction, and creative nonfiction in that second book oh wonderful there he could use that as a little plug <laughs> hey Dwayne. So, hey Dwayne. <laughs> well brad tell us about around the sun thank you again for having me on jerome and giving me an opportunity to share Around the Sun with your wonderful listeners and viewers. Around the Sun is an episodic audio drama, which means it's akin to old school radio plays. We're, as Jerome said, about to enter our third season, creeping up quickly in fall 2023. But generally the seasons are sewn together by some broad themes of human connections, made and missed, First season takes place in New York City. Second season takes place in a nondescript part of the American Southwest. And you can find both those seasons wherever you get your podcasts. And the third season takes place in a snowy mountain region. So the third season is ambitious in that it's a mini series where more so than seasons one and two, the plot line continues from start to finish. Oh, okay. And episodes can still be enjoyed as a one-off. So if people are searching for a personality that they happen to admire, someone whose work that they admire, they can more or less enjoy that episode independently from the rest of the season. Now, that's season a reference three. to kind of your like star-studded cast, the, this ensemble that you put together for um, these three seasons now. I've only seen the cast list for seasons one and seasons two, but you know, you, you take a scroll through at, um, is it around the sun podcast.com? What's your website? I've got it listed at the top here. Yes. It's around the sun podcast.com yes. and you can access episodes there and you can also find it again, wherever you listen to podcasts, it is audio True. only and it is audio fiction. So just another pseudonym there for radio plays, scripted podcast, audio yeah. fiction. Do you well, do words I, of the day? That could be one. Audio fiction? Yeah, two words. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but when you go to aroundsunpodcast.com, you can go to full episodes and you've got uh, headshots yeah. of the actors next to um, got like the, the play button, basically, uh, mm -hmm. the player. And I'm scrolling through and I'm like, oh, I know these people. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen yeah. these people my whole life. <laughs> they straddle a lot. And it, yes, there are a lot of iconic personalities in the podcast. It originated like Bottomless Coffee in the earlier days of pandemic. Yeah. So 
these people, they always book quickly, but I think perhaps the pandemic made them a little bit freer than they might have otherwise been. And I, I was also mm. helped in having prior relationships with about half a dozen of the personalities in season one. And they're saying yes to participate in Around the Sun. Marsha Mason, Austin Pendleton, Vincent Pastor, Maureen Van Zandt, Dolores Catania. Their willingness to do season one, because they knew me, they trusted me, we had worked together before, opened the door to everyone else whose headshot you'll see, as Jerome referenced. Gotcha. And we're now out of the pandemic, and Around the Sun is about to go into its third season. I'd like to think yeah. every season evolves with respect to my prowess as a writer. So you can enjoy everything independently, but if you're listening to the seasons as a comprehensive whole, season three, which is coming up, is best enjoyed from start to finish. Oh, that's super fun. I'm, uh, I'm excited for that binge. I love a bench. <laughs> um, but let's go back all the way to the beginning. Let's put ourselves into um, a very this good place to era. start. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or my, um, my husband is a big fan of Star Trek, and he's always okay. like, uh, as the temporal mechanics department always says, there's no time like the present. And so I love a time, <laughs> I love a time joke. Love a time joke. Um, let's go back where um, in the throws of the pandemic. Um, did you start around the sun during lockdown or where, what was your lockdown experience? Like, like how, how did this happen? Oh gosh. Well, I live in the Metro NYC region. So I'm looking okay. at New York city right now from Jersey city. I'll be at deep in Jersey city. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like to have dessert and appetizers, but I'm not sitting on top of New York City. It's <laughs> a ways in the distance. Either way, pandemic in Jersey City is pandemic in three rooms. So, you know, hmm. outside of being a creative and always need to scratch those creative urges and impulse, I just had to do something. At the time, I had a number of 10-minute plays that had been produced for a decade prior to pandemic oh. and 10 minute play festivals and circuits. And they had been vetted and developed and workshopped for years. And a little bit of repurposing once I stopped, well, I don't know that we ever really stopped panicking in those early days of yeah. pandemic, but once Agreed. I found my footing, I started reformatting those formerly 10 minute plays into what would become the first episodes of Around the Sun. They were all written about life in and around New York City, my community. And having prior professional relationships with those awesome folks I just referenced compelled them to say yes. They had directed me before. Vin, yeah. Austin, Marsha, Maureen, and Dolores Catania, we had worked together before as well as she's, she's part of my extended family. So mm -hmm. it was pretty easy to get off the ground. I, of course, because it's a professional project, it had to get SAG approval and oh. that took uh -oh. some time. Are we time. crossing, are we crossing picket lines? <laughs> well, I'm promoting my own project. So okay, good, good. I'm, I am not scabbing. I'm self-promoting thanks Love to it. your good graces. So that is totally <laughs> inside the parameters of the strike. Wonderful. Yeah. So then that's the scoop about how it came to be in pandemic. It was the bright spot of pandemic, if that's possible. In I was about to loss. say, this is like the glossy version of yeah. what happened because I was like, you know, disinfecting my groceries yeah. and stuff. Um, and then it wasn't until I was almost at my stir craziest that I was like, oh, maybe a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, just because we have to stay inside, it doesn't mean those creative impulses go away. And once yeah. I found my footing and seemingly sounds like once you found your footing, there's, there's new life to be had, new creations to generate. So episode one where you're probably mm -hmm. at your most nervous, like it's your, your first time do it, doing this remote thing. Um, how did you put it together? 
So episode one, season one, stars Austin Pendleton and Marsha Mason, both of whom I had a prior working relationship with. Mm -hmm. And that piece, which is called Park Bench, I don't want to give too much away, but I'll tell you that there's subtext in the first two thirds of that episode where both partners, the husband played by Austin, the wife played by Marsha, are not keeping a secret, but there's something just below the surface for both of those characters. And that piece, Park Bench, had been vetted a whole bunch of times. So there was nerves around how is this going to come together through remote technology, because mm -hmm. nobody really knew how to use that back in 2020. At this point, it's become so much a part of our muscle memory. Yeah. But directing the substance of the piece in a way that those actors had to affect their performances with voice only, that was going to be new for me out of the gate. And on top of that, it was directing and coaching through the technical aspects of remote recordings, which yeah. again, back then we were all kind of green to it, but it worked as they say. And it's a lovely episode. And again, if anyone wants, they can enjoy it as a one-off park bench or they can listen to the full season and maybe Marsha and Austin will pop up again. Ooh. Okay. I'm interested. Now yeah. you mentioned that you had 10 plays that you were, you first began working with, but now you're moving into season three. So are you also the writer? And I'm also scripter? the writer. Okay. Okay. I'm also the editor i'm also the producer <laughs> and all of those roles i love and i embrace it's really directing that i've learned is kind of a means to an end hmm. i like when actors because i am one can run with material themselves and bring their own lived experiences their own insights their own interpretation of the character to life without much intervention from the outside so sometimes I've learned that actors want to be redirected and want to do things a whole bunch of different ways that are vastly different from the time before they had just recorded it. And that's code for, you know, multiple takes. They want to do it different ways to give mm -hmm. me, also the editor, different things to work with when I get to post-production. Uh, Perhaps as an actor, I like what the actors come in with. I like when they make their own choices because on some level, that's why I cast them. So, And I've been a... really lucky to get my first choice in oh. every role that's been cast. Oh, congratulations. Good Thank for you. you. Yeah, Thank good for you. us too as audience members. <laughs> um, I have a wonky technical production question. This has come up before in podcasts where guests are like, oh, we get to actually talk to the host in real time instead of just recording something yes. and then having the host like record a question or a follow up and having that back and forth. And I'm like, oh, I would never do that. That would never work for me um, because <laughs> I like the human connection yeah. that we get here. Um, but in your process, uh, are you having people record themselves and their lines and then splicing the conversation together? Or is everyone getting onto a virtual platform at the same time, which is similar to kind of the old, old timey way of those radio productions, you know? <laughs> yeah. Old timey and yet try directing people who are not necessarily digital natives yeah. around the technicalities of remote recording. Uh, yes, and it's that one. It's the latter, Jerome. We record okay. together, which is very important to me. Now, even that has some permutations. When you listen to those earlier seasons, all but one or two episodes, all but two episodes, both actors were on the same remote recording session. Okay. In two of those instances, both actors who had committed to the projects followed through with the role they signed on for, but there were scheduling conflicts. So I wound mm. up reading live off the other 
actor. And I'll, I'll tell you that, I'll tell you who those two actors were. It's the very sure. wonderful Adasa, who was a huge smash last year in Encanto. She's one of the singers of We Don't Talk About Bruno. She plays cousin Dolores. And the other actor is Richard Kind who is in everything under the sun from Mad About You to a revived Carol Burnett show. And right now he's appearing at the New Jersey rep. I hope to see him in the next couple of weeks and um, both fabulous, fabulous talents. So they're the singular two actors, sure. but they're in two episodes. So it was really cool to channel Richard Kind and his amazing energy has just colorful eccentricities in my recording with Adasa and vice yeah. versa, she has this awesome smoky voice, Grammy nominated, American Music Award nominated, huge recording career in her own right. And one of the directions I gave to Adasa was to come on to Richard Kind's character. Oh, really? So I find myself, <laughs> so I recorded with Richard second, I find myself remembering what those directions were to Adasa and like, oh my goodness, I'm coming on to Mr. Kind here, yes. but through <laughs> the character that will ultimately be played by Adasa. So lots of fun stuff. And, um, that's cute. I love for that. the most part, we record synchronously. That's one exception where we didn't in seasons one and two. Okay. So since we're this pursuing my uh, memory slash vision of the old timey way of recording these episodic dramas. Do you also, do you do any of the sound effects during uh, the recording in the same way that you were kind of providing some at the opening of this episode? Uh, <laughs> I do. That's such an awesome <laughs> question. It's only come up one other time for me and being asked about the project and I like creating things. So I like going to collect subway sounds. I like recording birds chirping and waiting in an urban environment for a long uninterrupted stretch of just chirping birds. I mean, that's a lot of waiting, but I yeah. like that process. And I find when I get what I need, it's sure. I got to spend a day outside that I probably wouldn't have otherwise done, but it's very joyful to, listen to a finished product and hearing everything that's come together. It's cliche, but there's that Sondheim song, putting it together. And it's all part of the process. The birds chirping are just as much a part of the process as the ensemble actors who appear in that episode, which is coming up in season three. Well, Brad, I'm so glad that you mentioned the birds because right <laughs> After this coffee break, we need to have a conversation about murder. <laughs> oh, boy. I know. Finally, what everyone's been waiting for. We will be right back with Brad Forenza of Around the Sun and also murder. BRB. <laughs> Coffee Podcast is back. We're here with Brad Ferenza of Around the Sun. And now at Log Last, we're going to talk about murder. Uh, Brad, I was listening to one of your episodes and there was a conspiracy afoot, um, a murderous conspiracy about murdering a bird. It's true. And <laughs> Thank you. I'm really interested in how your episodic audio drama about human connection <laughs> arrived at this intersection of human connection and avian homicide. So <laughs> like, was this, was this, um, a play that had already been written or was this new? Like, what was that process? How did you arrive on the actors? I'm yeah, this is one of those episodes that had previously been presented in a theatrical stage context. It stars Maureen Van Zant, who I referenced a couple minutes ago, an amazing mentor, coach, director of mine, and Joanna Bonaro, another amazing talent, friend, collaborator. And they had worked together before. This piece was in the bag. It had only been done with men. I thought, Huh. This would be really great to put a 
female angle on it, to cast two women in these roles of neighbors who are one neighbor, Joanna's character is kind of indebted to Maureen's character. Maureen, mm -hmm. by the way, in addition to every amazing thing she is as an artist, also does a really great cockatiel impression. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? And I certainly didn't know that in asking her to be part of the project. And I've known her for years. So, yeah, that's yes. how that episode came to be. It's a fun episode. Now you're asking the other part of your question is how does it connect to human relationships? Yes. Well, that might be a, a trickier sell, but I can tell you that Maureen's <laughs> character, the reason she's setting her neighbor up to be her hench person, her sure. hired gun, the reason she wants to do that is because Maureen's character's partner loves this bird so much and mm. Maureen's character loves her partner so much. So she's not trying to destroy Pinky the cockatiel because her partner did something bad to her character. She wants to get rid of Pinky because she perceives that it will make yeah. her character and her character's partner more whole again. That's uh, really lovely and absurd. Yeah. In a way that I really appreciate because I try. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, well done. Well done. Uh, I think, or I'm pretty sure um, around the sun born during the pandemic at a time where we're all kind of questioning our connections with each other. Yeah. Um, and then you 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 script and uh, create these episodes that are really about some pretty nuanced. It, I guess I guess nuanced, maybe not that nuanced. Um, nuanced themes of of connection, but wanting to get closer to your partner is not that nuanced. Wanting to do it through murder, however, is absurd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and thank you for listening and directing people to that episode which is called wall street and it's in season one it's episode seven and i'll just piggyback off of what you're saying jerome and just remind everyone sometimes the best comedy is rooted in tragedy and i'm not saying my comedy is the best but maureen doing a cockatiel impersonation is the best <laughs> and joanna being this unwilling participant, stooge, so to speak, is the best. So yeah. your listeners can decide how they feel about my writing, but I'm so proud and euphoric about all the awesome work they did on a day, not for nothing, when I really, really needed it back in 2020. Mm. Yeah. Oh, tell me about that day. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, I'm an open book. You brought it up. I so. did bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring it up. It was a couple days after my dad had died. So sorry mm. to be a downer. That's okay. I lost someone during the pandemic too. So I understand. Lots, lots of loss. And I hate to just swing it into a promotion for the series, but people who listen all the way through will discern pretty quickly that it's dedicated to my dad. And I think more broadly in all the projects I've done as an actor or a creator, like yoga, <laughs> there's okay. intention involved. And strangely, my dad heard some of the rough cuts as mm -hmm. the episodes were being recorded. I was going back and forth to the hospital, but this is an episode that I just know he would have loved because his personality is so very much in it. Again, I asked Maureen and Joanna to record it because I thought that it would be even that much more different and nuanced if two women were portraying these characters that would probably typically be played by a wise guy. Yeah. And my dad just, he would have loved it. And somewhere in the universe, I can't help but think, but know that he does. Okay, well, if we're going to talk about the theme of human connection, there are people who feel as though that connection continues even after a person's body has passed on. 
I don't know what your beliefs are, but are there episodes that touch on uh, that topic or is that possibly still to come in the future? You are so good at your job, Jerome, because <laughs> Thank you. this back and forth feels so natural and something that I've just kind of learned about myself here in post-production for season three is that this existential flair, it's in the vast majority of Around the Sun episodes. Mm. And I, I know that because it's kind of part of our branding, but as I look back on the two seasons that are already out there for everyone to listen to, and I know what's coming, I'm just struck by themes that seem to embed themselves across seasons. It's halfway deliberate, but the depth of mm. that deliberate intention is just very surprising to me. So the short answer is yes. <laughs> well, there's something really beautiful about you creating something and then um, experiencing it yourself and then learning more about yourself through your own creation. Yeah. And it, if I can also say, you know, I'm very privileged and lucky to have grown up in a family, a friend circle, a community, a region with a lot of really dynamic characters. Mm. So many of them have moved on now. And my dad is a palpable example because of how he's my dad. But they're all there in the writing, not necessarily consciously, but things that people have said to me, little personality quirks, eccentricities, it's all there in this pantheon of characters portrayed by the likes of Piper Laurie, Estelle Parsons, Jenny Kwan, and on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. It's incredible. And I love that you're continuing to create um, this series that was born out of the pandemic, even now that circumstances for a lot of us have changed. Yeah. Um, so has that impacted the way that you produce the episodes at all? Are you getting people together in the same room, let's say, or are you doing anything differently? We're getting together still in the same remote recording rooms, which is all okay. virtual, but no, I have never asked for cast to be physical in the same physical sure. recording studio and that would limit the casting a bit because a lot of people are on the yeah. west coast i'm on the east coast so more or less you know fuzzy math here but probably my cast would be cut in half okay. uh, another way in which post pandemic has changed production is just season one was mostly in the bag which i previously shared but some of those episodes some a few of those season one episodes were written just for this medium so that I could have 10 episodes to put out as a comprehensive season one. But yeah. season two was written on a timeline where presented by the Broadway podcast network. Season three was written on the timeline that comports with their needs. And oh. it's, I hate to say things have become more businessy because that feels like you know, work and it is work. You know, this producing a podcast is work, yeah. is work, but it's joyful work. And I'm yes. not afraid of joyful work or any kind of work. It's the elbow grease is well worth it. Oh, absolutely. And you don't have to be afraid about talking about money on this podcast because we took like a six month break because I had invested so much. And in, as you can kind of see that I was like, oh, this is too good just to give away for free. So we got to figure out exactly how <laughs> like my time and the value of my time will be respected for this. Um, and that came through through a, a grant from the Minnesota Department of Health Amazing. Uh, that pays for this. And even better, uh, this season, when they were reviewing some of the first episodes, they were like, we don't think we're paying you enough money for this. Amazing. <laughs> Again, you're very Which good is, at your job. Yeah. You're very, very easy to talk with. I, I, I feel Thank like, you. you know, maybe in a prior life on some prior plane, we, we knew each other once before. You never know. It's possible. It's possible. I hear it. I hear a future episode being <laughs> written. <laughs> yes. The wheels are always turning. Yeah. And how do you envision the future of your series? You 
Do you already have ideas for seasons four, five, six? Oh, six seasons golly. in a movie? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. And at the same time, this sounds like I'm running for president. If anyone wants to know if I'm running for president, I am not. Yes. But uh. <laughs> I'm so focused bom, bom. on season three right now that it's yeah. hard to think about season four, five, six, but there are always ideas percolating. And you know this as a fellow creative. It's hard to divorce ourselves from ideas. There's always something. Yeah. Some light bulb going on up there. Well, I did have, I was having a, a coffee moment at some point when I was um, thinking about the questions that I wanted to make sure I asked you. And I wrote this one down and I'm reviewing it now. And I'm like, oh, wow, I was very caffeinated. Very caffeinated <laughs> as I knocked my microphone out. Um, as a creative mm -hmm. who has found a way to kind of engineer human connection through your, through your creativity, creativity, I wonder, like, given all of the resources in the world, like open, open field, unlimited bank account, you're basically a good version of Elon Musk at this point. <laughs> um, and given the loneliness epidemic that... Um, I'm hearing more and more about like, what what would be like, one of your ideas for for solving it? For solving the loneliness academic for epidemic. Solving our issue of uh, not being connected enough as gotcha. people. Well, I have an answer, and I'll just throw it out there with no qualifiers: spirituality and community engagement. I don't want to be Pollyannish and suggest that. Those two things and those two things alone are a cure-all for real issues like isolation and loneliness and maybe even depression for some people. But I do think what was so difficult about those early quarantine days in 2020 was the inability to actually be sharing a physical space with people who weren't in your pod or weren't in your network. Yeah. Uh, that's not natural. Engaging in life, whether it's through a political campaign or through community theater or through a rec baseball team, I think that just bonds people. And I think that's healthy. And that's just speaking as an adult. If I were to think about the pandemic and quarantine from a child's perspective, like my nieces and nephews, some of whom were born during mm. the pandemic. That's a really tough way, I think, IMHO, as the kids say, <laughs> to grow up, to not yeah. hug your extended family, to not have physical contact with your friends, your peers who would formerly be in the same physical class as you, but you're coming of age in the pandemic and you're stuck with whatever remote technology your district has contracted with. I'm glad I was able to do all of those things. Community theater, play baseball, though I was never really good at it, and eventually work on political campaigns. I also played baseball. I was not very good at it. And, um, but it's you learned a lot. Go. I did learn a lot. That's fair to say. <laughs> I it was a I very did. long time ago. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah? What did you learn? Well, teamwork. Mm, the notion that yeah. you can't be the best at everything. And I tried. And I tried it for a number of years. And then I remember there was one year wherein I just started swinging the bats. And there's no... You know, I, I was never the best. But I just started swinging the bat instead of trying to get hit by the ball so I could just walk to first base oh my or, gosh. or waiting for the three <laughs> balls so that I could get a walk. I just started swinging the bat and I had a handful of good hits in that season. I was never the best, but I think there's some kind of takeaway there. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, that sounds like the lesson I should have taken away from playing baseball as a child. <laughs> Instead of being like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a fun double entendre about swinging the bat that kind of defined my 20s. There, okay. So. <laughs> I like it. Well, I would think, I, 
would think that's what the twenties are for on some level. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Thank goodness. As long as we're safe and we got through it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yay. Okay. We started this segment talking about murder. We ended and I was worried that baseball. was going to bring us down. That's true. And by the way, here's some symmetry that wall street episode with Maureen and Joanna and the dead bird takes yeah. place at a subway series game. Huh. <laughs> he he dropped the mic for everyone that couldn't see. Um, I do have a follow up. I think uh, my notes say something about Star Trek. It's Star Trek in all caps Ooh. with a lot of exclamation points. Okay. Um, and I think some of that has to do um, again with the expansive cast. I showed it to some friends um, and B D Wong in particular. Uh, was of interest to some of my male friends. <laughs> He's awesome. And another wonderful talent, of course, omnipresent across decades. Yes. Love him. And Bruce Valanche as well. Ah, another omnipresent. <laughs> yes. Across decades. Oh, gosh. So just what was working with them like or their episodes or the Star Trek connection? Because Bruce has a very clear Star Trek connection in his episode. My husband would like to hear about the Star Trek connection. Your husband would appreciate season <laughs> two, episode seven, titled Lonely Planet. It stars mm. Mr. Bruce Valanche and Ms. Mindy Cohn as Trekkies who have left the connection. There's a unrequited affection between them and... Bruce's character, whose name is Skip, has brought Mindy's character, whose name is Molly, out to the middle of the desert just to pontificate life and hopefully get to profess his love for her. Oh. She just wants to get back to the convention because there's a panel of Klingons from five different houses and she's missing it because he dragged <laughs> her out there and he's not saying what he wants to say. And really the undercurrent of that is he loves her. A spaceship yeah. is coming to take them away. And there's some great improv in there wherein Bruce kind of steers into that Star Trek world. And, and the fact, yeah. I'm steering out of your question, Jerome, but the fact okay. that Emmy-winning writer, two or three-time Emmy-winning writer Bruce Valanche has kind of put his own personal stamp in my writing and improvising some of the lines to make them pop even more for the benefit of the project is just really, really becoming and just so awesome. And I kind of remember specifically the lines he improvised were about Gene Roddenberry and the infinity of it all. So mm -hmm. their episode is a comedy. So too is Maureen and Joanna's episode. They're ultimately comedies, but wedded together by these existential thoughts and contemplations as it were. We love an existential contemplation. Tell Sometimes your husband to check to out that them. episode. Yes. I absolutely will. I'm going to tell everyone to check out that episode. His, um, so funny, his brother actually runs a YouTube account called Trek Bros. Ah. And so maybe we'll even get a shout out there. Who knows? Nice. And yeah. you mentioned B.D. Wong as well. And I'm thinking about oh, our yes. conversation a couple minutes ago about kind of what is real life and what might have been a prior life or what's a yeah. hallucination mr wong's episode opposite ms christine nagy is called apothecary and there's some of that embedded in their episode what on screen or tv would have to be spelled out as a flashback or a dream mm. we can kind of play with listeners expectations in this audio drama phrase of the day landscape and let listeners come to their own conclusions about what's really happening in that episode. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I, I need to just go ahead and listen to every one of these episodes. And I think that's probably what I'll just do this weekend. Because well, they're, they're only like 13 or 14 minutes. Yeah, long. they average between 10 and 15 minutes. And the episode that I just referenced, season one, episode six, Apothecary, starring B.D. Wong and Christine Nagy. That's an episode that people have circled back to me on to uh -oh. communicate the impact it had. I'll stop there. Okay. I don't want to be cagey, but 
you know, got to leave a little, a little incentive you to do. listen. You do. You do. I have, um, I'll tell a quick story and then we'll go on coffee break. Um, I went to Palm Springs a couple of months ago and we got a bunch of friends together and we're chatting and a friend of mine who grew up in Atlanta and then moved to New York and was like, oh, my life isn't really where I want it to be. Joined fashion, went into fashion school, moved to the West Coast and is now designing costumes for like uh, Lil Nas X and other wow. stars. And so it's just like really uh, turned a corner in his life where he's feeling really successful. Yeah, we're at brunch, and he's like, Jerome, I just want to let you know, my mother listens to that podcast episode of us over and over and over again, just on repeat. Thank you so much for, like, having that conversation with me. You've, it's really something special for her. And I was like, oh, my God. That's so beautiful. <laughs> it is. It really, really is. And so I really appreciate that. People are circling back to you and letting you know that your episodes were really meaningful to them as well. Well, thank you for for validating my 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 self reference, but I'm going to spin it back on you and say you're doing really great things and you never know who's out there in That's the great true. beyond listening to your episodes as I have done and what might touch them or heal them or normalize their experience. It's maybe that's maybe that's more of the good that has come out of those earlier pandemic days where we all yeah. felt so alone in it all. Maybe so. Let's take a quick coffee break. We'll get some Kleenex and then <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Bottomless Coffee. I'm Jerome. Yay! All of our episodes are at bottomlesscoffeeshow.com. We're with Brad Ferenza of Around the Sun. It's aroundthesunpodcast.com. Uh, season three is coming up. True. You've told us some things. You've yes. told us that it'll be more of a mini series style format. Yeah. You've told us that it'll be in the mountains. Yeah. So you haven't told us much else. <laughs> if you think of American Horror Story, Ooh. they call that a franchise wherein every season is self contained. So yes. I would say my season one, our season one of Around the Sun is self-contained in that all of the episodes are wedded to New York City and the, the greater NYC region. Season two, same thing in the desert. And season three, we're in the snowy mountain region, but there is continuity from episode to episode. So all seasons can stand on their own as a franchise. And season three can be enjoyed as a one-off, just like our prior two seasons. And if you really want to get the most out of it, go from start to finish when it drops in fall 2023 because the ensemble voice acting cast is really functioning as exactly that, a voice acting mm. ensemble where actors playing the same character throughout the season is embedded from episode to episode. Okay. So I love that and I'm very interested and I'm also kind of relating back to you saying Bruce Valanche was improving yes um, at some point so is there is there routinely improv that comes up in season 3 or in past seasons or? you know it's a great question and i think when i record with anyone these professional talents are bringing their own insights, expertise, interpretation of a character to that remote recording room. Bruce just jumps out at me because he said, is it okay if I change some of these lines around a little bit? And he didn't whip out a pen. He's just so fast and sharp. He's doing it all in his head. And he's a great example of someone who gave a couple different variations. Oh not only in performance, but also in his lines that he was improv from take to take in that Lonely Planet episode with Mindy Cohn. In season three, another Emmy-winning writer is joining us, and that's Judy Gold, who won two Emmys for writing and producing The Rosie O'Donnell Show. And of course, oh she's, she's an iconic comedian in her own right. She also gave me just such great, rich material to work with. And there was one spot where I had scripted something, a button, 
on one of her episodes, because again, season three, it's very much an ensemble approach across mm -hmm. the season. But she had to end this one episode on a funny note. And I had scripted what that funny note was. It actually was a conversation with my character, since I usually oh. plug myself into one role a season. Not overkill, but one role a season. So <laughs> her character's talking with my character. Her character gets the final beat, and it's a laugh line, and she changed that laugh line each and every take, which I just love. Oh. And, of course, just like Bruce, she said, is it okay if I do X? And I, like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Please do. Yeah. That's perhaps <laughs> the greatest compliment that my writing could receive. Were you, were you like, yes, of course you can. Yeah. No writing credit, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we got to call the union and they're out doing right? other things right now. But yeah, it, and I don't mean this in a, in a sycophanty kind of way. It's just it, it surprises me every time that a Bruce Valanche, a Judy Gold, David Allen Bache is not a writer, but he is a prolific actor. He improvised some lines in season one for his episode with his real life wife, Alicia Reiner. Oh. Yeah. And their episode is called Upper West. It's season one, episode five. And, and same thing. He's putting a stamp on it. It was a high energy scene. They're having an argument and that all has to come across. The high energy has to come across in this audio drama, phrase of the day, bing, 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 mm -hmm. landscape. <laughs> and in doing that, he just came up with some really great things. So while not known for being a writer, he is a creator. And Bruce and Judy are that. And, and all of these people are that. And yeah. changing topics a little bit here. Hopefully I don't get a oh. traffic ticket. But how beautiful it is. <laughs> That, that, that's the connective tissue, whether someone's yeah. a writer, an actor, it's the creative process and, and, and saying something new that seems to bind all of these people together, whatever their resume suggests. And a love for the work that's also surprising to me every time, and yet it shouldn't be. They love what they mm. do. They don't treat themselves as stars. They're people who have had projects that have popped, and I speak for none of them. And they love the work. To a person, yeah. they love the creative process, which is us. I love it. I love it. I, um, I am going to follow up with a business question. Okay. Brad, uh, you've got kind of this process down, and it sounds like there's room for improv. Is there also room for people or groups to produce their own episodes of Around the Sun? Maybe have a, an Around the Sun uh, cinematic universe, or, but not cinematic, I guess, episodic audio universe. <laughs> well, I, I would, so any creative spirit who might want to raise the visibility of their projects, which might be you know, who knows the next citizen Kane, the next color mm -hmm. purple, the next amazing contribution to the arts and entertainment. It's kind of cliche, but I'll share what was shared with me years ago. Just do it. And huh? I didn't understand when that was shared with me years ago. It took the pandemic to, have some of these mm -hmm. mentors and coaches free up and, and have the chutzpah, the moxie to kind of say, hey, will you do this all under the professional sanction of SAG? Yeah. Um, so if someone has a really great project, I would hope that they would put it on their feet with whoever was willing to help them. Again, it surprises me that this cast has been willing to help me. And it starts from a group of people I know. I just was privileged mm -hmm. to happen to know some, some high profile people, but start with who you know and, and go from there. And while this isn't the question you asked, Jerome, if there was anyone out there interested in 
producing around the sun for the stage, I would encourage them to (laughs) find vignettes, which houses the scripts for around the sun's seasons one and two. And okay. What is vignettes? It's the source material for around the sun. And where is it available? It is available in online retailers and okay. unless they're dealing us in, I won't invoke them, but, okay. <laughs> but it's vignettes by Brad for It's vignettes. You can, you can Google it. Yeah. And you can find it. I'm, I'm being silly. You can find it on Amazon and I, I used to be able to say Barnes and Noble, but I'm, I'm not sure where that's at these days. And at a fine yeah. retailer near you yeah, <laughs> or distribution warehouse near you, you'll <laughs> and there's also information on how to contact me for whatever that's worth. Not because oh, that's nice. I'm going to ask them for anything other than an invite to the show. I would like to come. I know people have done individual episodes before and they let me know. And if it's, if it's close, I go for whatever that's worth. I, cool. I love it. It's the creative process. We're supporting each other. I love that. There's a lot. I'm in Minneapolis. There's a lot of theater in Minneapolis and a lot of Minneapolitans who listen to the podcast. So you never know. You might be coming to the Midwest. I would say uh, don't come after November or before like April. (laughs) I hear great, amazing things about Minneapolis. I haven't been, but it's on the bucket list. And hopefully at some point I will get to get there. But I hear great things about the Bohemia that is Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's some really good times. Uh, okay. Well, I like to give the guests a final thought. Okay. And you've got a lot of uh, good vibes, Brad. So leave us back with at you. Some good vibes, please. Oh gosh, some good vibes. Or any kind of message. If you bring any us down, I'm going to bring message. us back up. All right. You, um, again, I'm sure you're very good at that. You're very natural and very engaging. Good vibes. Well, <laughs> good vibes that'll make me totally look like a nut, but I used to have a song that I would sing to myself and I wrote it to myself for myself. And I was just recalling this the other day. I was actually singing it to my husband. So maybe tonight you could sing it to yours. Sure. And it goes something like this. Da, 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 smile more, practice a spirituality, eat well, exercise, create nice things, be genuine and generous, and challenge yourself, talk man or woman or person or whatever. Ta da! I just added Ta-da. that last beat. What a great song! That's so <laughs> good. Um, okay, I was supposed to be taking us out, but now I'm going to tell a story. I, at some point, got really into my own development, right? I was like, how can I be a better podcast host? How can I be a better friend? And how can I be a better husband? And so at one point I had an alarm set in my phone. So it's my normal wake up. And then right beneath it, it was like, make sure Aaron knows he's loved. So very first thing every single day was sometimes even in an annoying way, was just making sure that my husband knew that he was like a loved human being. Um, and I think that song is, is definitely in that spirit. <laughs> well, thank you, Jerome. I mean, yeah. it was a song that I just would sing to myself, if you can call that singing. And they're just things to remember. Not a panacea if someone's dealing with real issues, but just things in the privacy of my everyday life that I just want to be mindful that create a happy experience for me and the people I surround myself with. That's beautiful. Those are some good vibes, Brad. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. And thank you for this conversation. This is really, really great. I do think this is one of the ones that I will come back to um, and think, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta listen to more Brad stuff. (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much thank you for having me and say hi to aaron i will i will 
And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Bottomless Coffee Podcast. By now, you should know the drill. If you're able to leave five stars, I want you to leave it several times. <laughs> Make sure you've subscribed. Make sure that you've liked. And you can stream all of our episodes at bottomlesscoffeeshow.com. Uh, Brad, will you sing that song for us one more time as we go? Da, 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 da. Smile more. <laughs> Practice the spirituality. Bye, everybody. Eat well, exercise. Create nice things. Be genuine and generous and challenge yourself. Talk. Insert pronoun here. Insert pronouns. <laughs> Bye.